Hey everyone, welcome to Anaheim Park Tours. In today's video, we're sharing tips to help you save money at Disneyland. And the first revolves around food. One of the big things that we do every trip is bring a bunch of snacks. And now when our children were smaller, we would change those snacks up and bring different things all the time because kids get really overwhelmed at Disneyland and having new snacks helps keep their attention to eating. And when they're overstimulated, they tend not to eat and get real hangry. And so this helps them out quite a bit. Uh, we also bring receivable bags for any types of snacks that the kids can't finish or we can't finish. For example, those Tigger Tails are really sticky. And instead of throwing them out if they can't finish them, uh, we just stick it in a bag and they have a snack for a little bit later. And the same goes for popcorn. Sometimes we buy popcorn, can't get that popcorn finished in time. And so we dump that into a plastic bag and eat it later. One other thing we do is we drive to the parks. And if you yourself do drive to the parks, one big thing that we have done in the past to save quite a bit of money is freeze a meal. In the past, we froze a spaghetti dinner. We would warm it up in the hotel room and eat it and it would save, you know, maybe 60, $70 on a dinner. So that's just a simple way to save some money. Another thing you can do to save money at the parks is to walk right across the street to all the offsite dining that's available. And there are quite a few options. There's Mimi's Cafe, Panera, McDonald's, Pizza Press, Blaze Pizza, Subway. There's a ton of options within walking distance in 10 minutes or less and you can be eating really great food for a fraction of the price at the Disney food. Another thing we do at the parks, and usually it's Jim and I now, and we'll share a meal. We do this almost every trip. We share a meal or we just skip lunch altogether and we'll get a bigger snack and just eat that and then tide us over until dinner. If you are flying into the area and you can't bring your own food, you can do grocery delivery from Vons, which is a local grocery store, or Walmart. Also, within walking distance, if you're staying right across the street on Harbor, there's a Walgreens and a CVS, and they have a lot of food options as well if you just wanna pick up a couple things for your room. And one big suggestion we have is, at minimum, to grab stuff for breakfast, because breakfast adds up quick. And this last trip, we went to Carnation Cafe as a splurge, and it was $60 for the four of us for breakfast. So we usually bring our own breakfast sandwiches, if you're flying in, you could grab those at CVS. Um, sometimes we brought muffins. Anything you can bring for breakfast is just gonna save you a lot of money and time in the parks. Another thing we encourage you to do if you are using grocery delivery and you don't have a reusable water bottle is to order a case or two of water. This will save you quite a bit of money in the park and you are allowed to bring in water. We did make a video that we'll link in the description and it lists everything you can bring into the park. Up next are souvenirs. Now we realize most people probably budget for a couple of souvenirs here and there, so this is gonna focus mainly on smaller children because they see all the shiny things and sparkly things in the park and they usually will want all of those things, at least in our experience, our kids did. So these are some quick tips on how to handle that with your children because it gets a little tricky. So for instance, our kids usually did okay until nighttime rolled around and all the carts would roll out with all the light up necklaces and toys and swords and all that kind of stuff and then they would want that. So what I would do a lot of trips is before we would go, I would head out to the dollar store and buy a bunch of glow sticks and glow necklaces, glow bracelets, throw those in our backpack in the morning and then when they would want all those light up toys, I could take those out of the backpack and they would be so excited and it only cost me two dollars versus the Disney prices for those items. Another trick we do is you know Disney sells all those light up necklaces so we would look on Amazon <laughs> ahead of time and buy this almost exactly the same necklace that Disney sells for a fraction of the price and same thing we would throw those in our bag and the kids were absolutely thrilled they could care less where we got it. They just were happy they had the light up necklace. Another trick as our kids got a little bit older is we would let them know 
how much money we would let them spend on their souvenir and we would encourage them to wait until the end of the trip so they could see all of the things within their price range and then make a decision on what they wanted to buy. And this was really helpful in helping them make truly make a decision on what they absolutely had to have. And sometimes this worked really great and other times not so much because they would see the first thing and they'd want that right away and they would not drop it. <laughs> so it might work, it might not, but it's a great little tip and it kind of teaches them about money as well. Some of the attractions at Disneyland exit you right into a gift store and there's some rides where you can't really do a whole lot about it like Toy Story Mania and Star Tours. There's no bypassing the store, you have to walk through it to exit. But for Buzz Lightyear, if you stay to the very far right, it takes you on another path away from the store and you don't have to walk into that store at all. And same for a small world, if you stay to the very far left at It's a Small World, then you bypass the little store at the exit and you don't have to walk through it at all. So those are some quick tips if you don't wanna deal with your kids asking you for every single thing in the store. <laughs> we used to do that quite a bit. Um, eventually the kids caught on, but. <laughs> Staying hydrated in the park gets really expensive. We use reusable water bottles. Crystal and myself use Yetis, and then our children use a, a different type of cup. That's because water bottles are about four to five dollars. We haven't bought water in a very long time because of our reusable containers. Uh, but you tend to drink a lot of water when you're at Disneyland, especially on really hot days. So if you do forget your water bottle, uh, you can get free water at any of the counter service restaurants. It's typically a small glass of water. And when it's a little hotter, sometimes you get lucky and they'll give you a larger cup of water. Another thing we do is when we order Starbucks, we'll ask for Trenta glasses of ice water. And that way our reusable water bottle will get some ice in it and we get some nice ice cold water into those water bottles. Disneyland and California Adventure are not equal when it comes to water fill stations. There are quite a few water fill stations at Disneyland and we will list the locations in the description below. California Adventure, well, they have one that's located in Avengers Campus. It's near the Quinjet, but there is also the Coke Freestyle machine that's located in Pim's Test Kitchen and we have been known to go there and grab some ice water. No one has ever said anything, just make sure you grab ice water. There's an additional water bottle filler at the Pixar Pals garage. And if you need to find one when you're in the park, you can open up the Disneyland app and you search water fountain or water filling station and it will pop up on the map and show you where they all are. To see if there's a water bottle filling station, you have to click each one because um, some are just drinking fountains. Tickets are the biggest expense and you can find discounted tickets at authorized vendors. For example, Undercover Tourist and Getaway Today. We have used both of those in the past. And you have to make sure that you're buying your tickets from an authorized vendor. They have to be authorized from Disney to be able to be selling these tickets. One thing to note, if you're coming from Florida, in California, you cannot charge sales tax for theme park tickets. So if you go to, for instance, GovX, one time we were trying to price out tickets and we thought, wow, this is a great deal. It's so much cheaper here. And then at the end, they added on sales tax and it actually made it more expensive. So double check all of that before you click that buy button and make sure that you're not getting charged sales tax. Another major expense besides tickets are hotel rooms. And we have been asked, is it better to book further out or last minute? And in our experience, you tend to get those better deals at 60 days plus. We have seen good deals last minute. So if you are planning under that 60 day window, just do a lot of research and check for reviews, check for prices and make sure everything looks good. Now the large chains have all their typical discounts, AAA, government and so on. But a lot of the hotels in the Disneyland area are independently owned and they have different types of discounts. Magic Key, uh, First Responder, and many other types of discounts. So make sure you check the websites of each of those independents because you may qualify for additional discounts. We have seen that some hotels do have mailing lists and the one that sticks out in my mind right now is the Grand Legacy. And if you join their mailing list, they will send specials to you from time to time. 
and you might luck out and your trip is during that special. If you do get one of those emails that gives you a better rate, just call the hotel to ask, how do I get this rate for my trip? Another way you can save money in the Disneyland area is to call the independent hotels directly and book. For example, Hotel 414 and Alpine Inn have both told us that their best rates are by booking over the phone. Doesn't hurt to pick up that phone and ask. We also encourage you to follow your favorite hotels on social media. Recently, the Stovall's Best Western, and that's four different hotels, they gave away a free weekend to a lucky family. And we ourselves won a free weekend at the Grand Legacy about eight to nine years ago just by following social media. So it's another way you can potentially get a freebie out of the area. Other websites that offer great discounts are GovX, ID.me, and Working Advantage. If you are flying into the parks and you're only going to the Disneyland Resort, you might want to think about not getting a rental car just because usually most hotels in the area do charge a parking fee and if you are planning on driving yourself to Disneyland Resort, it's $30 a day to park as well. So those fees add up really quickly. If you do need a rental car during your trip or you only need it for a day or two, you can use the Alamo, which is right next to the Alpine Inn on the corner of Harbor and Catella, and you'd probably save a lot of money by just renting it for one day or a couple of days of your trip instead of the entire trip. And now, Genie Plus. And when you are buying tickets on the Disneyland website, and for example, you buy a three-day ticket, Disneyland just groups on there that you want three days of Genie. And we encourage you not to buy that Genie Plus add-on through the website. Purchase Genie Plus when you are actually in the park, and that way you can control what days you're using Genie Plus and what days you're not. And we did make a video on Genie Plus where we expand on when you should buy it, when you shouldn't, and I'll leave that in the description below. If you are using a one park per day type ticket, uh, we encourage you to only use Genie Plus on the Disneyland days and skip it for California Adventure. We feel like there is enough time to get everything done without Genie in California Adventure. Recently, we had a friend go to Disneyland and she had one park per day tickets and she bought Genie on the website for both days. And at Disneyland, she felt like she did get a, her money's worth, but at California Adventure, uh, it wasn't very crowded and there is not as many attractions that take Genie there. And she really didn't feel like she got her money's worth. And she said she, if she picked that morning, she probably would have skipped buying Genie Plus at DCA. Now, if you have park hoppers, we at least encourage you to use Genie Plus on your first day while you're full of energy. Now, we wanna hear from you. What money saving tips do you have for everybody else? Leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you wanna check out another Disneyland Tips video, go ahead and click the link here.